Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video I'm going to be talking about the buttons along the top here on the top panel and what they do so first thing I'm going to do is just get a gate down here so we've got our gate and you can see that this is a dark scene so we're getting some lighting of the ground from the light on the gate if I select that you can see that I've got the movement gizmo on it that allows me to move it around and previously in the 112 track editor when this is the 113 track editor but in 112 we had the W E and R keys for switching between movement rotation and scaling but you can now do that with a button so if you didn't know the keys you can now do it with a button just by clicking this button so you can click it once and it shows you rotation and this is now the rotation gizmo and you can click it again and you get the scale gizmo and click it again and it goes back to movement so that's that button the next button is about how things rotate when you have have things multiply selected so if I put another gate in here like so, so now we have two gates and I select both of them what you can see, let me just change the rotation gizmo as well so we've got our rotation gizmo, okay there we go and what you can see on this button here is that there's an orange dot between these two blocks and what that means is that rotation is around a point in the middle of the two selected objects so you can see as I rotate this we're rotating around the exact middle of those two selected objects if I click this button here what this does is it changed to local rotation for see for each object so now they're going to rotate around their local axis not the midpoint of them so if I now rotate you'll see they rotate around their own axis so could put them like that for instance so they're side by side and then click here and then rotate them together like that so that's that button this button here this is the light button so this is for turning on the lights so if I click this I can get full lighting into this scene so I can see a bit better that's all that's doing and I can click it again to turn out the lights So the next button here, the global button, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to uh, rotate this gate. So let's select this gate and rotate him like, like that. Okay. And then select back to the movement gizmo. Now I'm in global mode at the moment, which means that this direction down here is always X, this direction here is always Z and green is always up and down so if I select this object and I move it on the green arrow it just goes directly up and down like that but this object has a local axis as well and if I click that it will change to local and you can now see that X is across the object Z is directly through it and the green axis sorry I should call these red green and blue so red is across the object blue is through it and green is vertically up through the object so you can see the difference between global which is green is always up versus local which is green is the upward direction of the object itself this is really useful for positioning things because sometimes you want to work with global axes and sometimes you want to work with the local axes okay so the next button is the focus button so whatever I've got selected I can make I can focus in on it like that which is the same as pressing F I can also have an object that is not proper you know not seated on the ground I can click the ground button and it will put it on the ground so that's what the ground button does and then the clone button which is a really interesting button so the clone button 
basically creates a clone of whatever you've got selected. That could be one object or it could be multiple objects. So if I hit it once, what it does is it, it's created a clone of this gate and then it's selected that gate. So it always creates a copy and then selects that copy. So you'll see that I've actually got gate 2 selected here. So if I move this down like that, and let's say I was doing a run of gates, I can clone again. And you can see I've now got gate 3 selected. So I can move that down again. So now I've got 1, 2, 3. So it's really nice for laying out gates and that kind of stuff because it will allow you to clone and will always select the next gate in the order if you do it one at a time. It's also very useful if you're constructing say bando stuff where you want to build like a, a run of objects and you want to use um, snapping on those objects. So let's say I was building a, a ceiling so let's put down a ceiling tile so there's a ceiling tile and I clone it I can hold down control and it will snap like that so I can then snap it like that so now it's two I can select both of them click clone and I can hold down control and snap in this direction like so now I can hold down control and select all four hit clone and then snap in this direction and you can see that I can very quickly build out a ceiling say for a building which I would then lift up and put my walls underneath but with the use of clone and snapping I can just very quickly build it out and know that all my edges match really nicely so that's um, that's a really nice part of the clone functionality okay so that's my top line of buttons that have been added to the track editor to make access to this kind of functionality easier than remembering a load of keyboard shortcuts Okay, that's it. I'll see you on the next video.